Hello, I'm Eileen Wood, and this is today's episode of Bag Lunch. We're continuing on with the theme that I am calling New Acquisitions. We have been stuck at home during the pandemic, and I have used some of that time to scroll the internet to locate some interesting new bags to add to my collection. So this is another group of new additions that have shown up since the beginning of the pandemic. This bag I know very little about, but it is very different and special. It is antique, clearly. It's probably from the 20s or 30s, more likely 20s. And the technique is some kind of a, a silk knit ribbon that has been gathered together to create these designs. And I've never seen anything quite like it and it's got a lovely frame that's made out of celluloid that resembles um, tortoise shell. And it is beautifully finished inside with silk. And once again, know very little about it, but I think it's quite special and it certainly appears to be from the 20s. These two bags, while from different designers, I think are talking about the same things. And by that I mean, this is a Betsy Johnson bag and it's made out of wicker, and it's meant to look like an ice cream cone, and it's ornamented with a little dangle charm that looks like the cherry that could have been on top. And there are tiny little bead sprinkles that are stitched on. So this is an American bag. The next bag I'm showing you is from Lulu Guinness, who is an English designer, and this is her take on a similar subject. And this is a little basket of cherries and the cherries as well as the basket are made of straw. This is straw that's been stitched in a circular fashion. And the cherries are raffia, which have been crocheted as well as if you look within, there is a base that looks like it is meant to be the stems and the leaves. But this cute little basket shape is from Lulu Guinness, who is an English designer who does very amusing things. While we are looking at unusual basket bags, this is a bag also from the early 60s. And this bag is done by a woman named Evelyn Williams, who I was not familiar with, but did a bit of research. And it appears that she had a look similar to today's Talbot. It was very tailored. It was very ladylike and she had a store. And this bag is an example of one of her upscale basket bags. And rather than just a simple basket, she encased hers in really fine leather. And on the front, she had a beautiful design created as an applique, which appears to be oak leaves and acorns, and the monogram M in the center. So this must have been custom finished for a customer. And additionally, she just really executed this beautifully. It's all lined in black silk, and she has this flap that tucks over the top to keep the women's possessions concealed and secure. This is another summer bag. This one having a fun shape. It's almost like a hoop of woven wicker and affixed to the front and back are panels of cotton that have been embroidered with cruel embroidery in wool yarn. And I, once again, I don't know too much about this bag. I did a bit of research and I found similar examples showing that they had been made in Greece. So maybe this was a tourist uh, souvenir that someone took back from a trip to Greece. And I think based upon the costume of the person on the front, I think that's a likely good guess. Here is another dark but summery bag. And this one too has cruel embroidery on it. And I believe that this bag was a homemade bag. It looks like the woman purchased the black cotton and traced and stitched the design. And it opens up on a metal kind of a frame 
that could have been easily purchased at a local craft store. So I think this is someone's homemade effort that is really quite exquisite. The, the woman showed a lot of talent and originality in creating the needlework. Today's final bag is also beautiful hand stitchery. This is an embroidered bag done with silk embroidery and ornamented with three-dimensional elements and beading. And this was done in Tibet. This is a designer bag from Josie Notori. And you may be familiar with her work. She does gorgeous lingerie and underwear and she sells her things to the finest stores. So this is a bag that was purchased at Neiman Marcus back in the early 80s when Josie Notori came out with a collection of designer handbags. And the handbags were based upon antique fabrics and articles from her personal collection. And this being one of them, I'm sure she had an embroidered tapestry that came from Tibet and she channeled the look or actually used Tibetan fabric to create this bag. So thank you for joining us for today's bag lunch. Please tune, again, tune in again next time.